song, Sean. A plus to you for choosing that song. Uh, thank you, thank you. A plus to we, them for writing it. It's perfect for this. <laughs> it is perfect for this week. So last week we're gonna dive right in here. We talked about core values. This week, I, I think just listening to the song, you can get a little bit of an idea of what we're talking about. But we are still in the core of your business. We are talking about mission. So last week we had a lot of fun talking about core values. Yeah. Um, I know mission is equally as important. There's no nothing that's more or less important, but um, how do you feel about mission statements and, and companies, um, you know, following their mission, creating a proper mission statement? Let's, let's dive right in. Yeah. Okay. So today, well, let's give, let's give a tiny bit of context in case people right. weren't here last week. So, so both in the preview and in the room, we talked about the architecture, that there are 10 fundamental disciplines, every business, anywhere, in any sector, size, shape, look, feel, every business, anytime there are human beings engaged in a value exchange, there is an architecture with 10 fundamental disciplines. You know them as things like traditionally called strategic planning, uh, operations, process management, automation, human resources, management, all right you know the 10 and we have an architecture that says those 10 were all built on false pretenses and just a little off from where they should have been and so that flaw runs through most institutionalized businesses we have reduced those elements to their true nature and core and purpose and have blended them together in a truly harmonious way hence the harmonious business architecture and so those elements, the first of which is navigation, you might know it as strategic planning. Navigation is core values, mission, and vision in that order. And then we take those after they're powerfully written in the right way. And we make sure we connect them to the rest of the elements of your business. Some places where they're not connected in most businesses, we connect them all so you have the proper leverage points to get the true value out of all the elements, but in this case, core values, and now your mission. So today, so yes, then we went deep on core values. I think we've got some people on absolutely the right track or already there with some powerful core values that are going to now affect all elements of the business. And today we're going to take those core values now that we know who we are and the inviolable rights by which we live, right? the things that are in alignment with who we are at our, at our core, this is the kind of business I want. Now we know that. So now we're talking about our mission. So what is the reason you exist? And so Brandon, you asked me a question. I didn't forget it. Rare day. I'm on it. I'm Look excited you about it. You know, so mission, the purpose, I mean, it is part of navigation is so key. Because we've seen, it is very obvious when companies don't get this right. And, but so there's a lot of things here that could go wrong, but we'll talk about what do I love about it? I love about it. Um, what I love about the mission is because it keeps you on, there's two sides to this coin. We'll get heavy into this in the room. But your mission is your, why you exist. And so it has to be built for the end user. It is to serve this community but written in a way that doesn't narrow you down too much in the ways in which you're going to do that. But a mission is inspiration and protection on the same, at the same time. So inside our harmonious business model, harmonious, the acronym I is inspiration. That's leadership. And uh, R harmonious. Yes. R is risk, uh, risk and protection right? Risk and defense. It's rad when you get it right. Risk assessment and defense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so risk is the other part of that, right? So a lighthouse is a beacon and it inspires you. It draws you to it. That's where you want to go, but it also is protection. So, well, if I'm going to go and work there, I need to make sure that you are demonstrating that mission all the time. Now I believe it, right? I, if, I, if I know that's your mission and I'm going to go work for you, I feel protected that you are going to not violate that. Now, the second you do, you have disgruntled workforce and you have all kinds of other problems. But as long as you're remaining who you are and you're not hypocritical in any way, a lot of power there then 
and protect because I feel protected. And if I'm an investor, I know what I'm investing in. I know where my money's safe because I know how you show up. AJ Donaldson is a great example for from Epic. So Epic, we know what their core values are. And so this is it. We should we'll talk later about them, especially in the room. Okay. But so Epic of South Florida, their mission is to provide ongoing support for underserved students. Um, in today's um, evolving educational system. Sorry, I'm trying to do some of this from, from memory, right? But beautiful. I know exactly what he's doing. Ongoing support for students in today's evolving educational system, right? I know what that is. Not too narrow, very broad and inspiring. And because he demonstrates his core values all day, every day, I believe he is true to his mission. And therefore, I want to be a part of it. That's why I'm on the, all fairness, I'm on the board of directors. But why would I want to be part of that mission? Because I know what their core values are. I believe in them. There's an alignment there. I know who he is. I, so now I believe in his mission and the people he's surrounding himself with. And of course, and so I'm protective. Of course, I'll serve there. Of course, I'll help you. I know who you are and how you're going to show up in the world. And, and my reputation is attached to that now, and I'm safe to do that. So there's a protection and an inspiring part. And you got to get both sides of that coin, right? Enormous value there. Yeah. And so I'm glad you brought that up because that's, I want to touch on that. But first, I want to go back uh, to the beginning. I was so excited by the song. And um, I also get caught up in how often we talk about these things that I completely forgot to mention that this is not the inner circle. It says that on the screen. This is the inner circle preview show. We will yeah. be in the inner circle. So when Sean says we're talking about that in the room, that is from noon to one Eastern time every Tuesday. Uh, we we go in, we dive into the whatever area we're talk, talking about. So today is mission, as you can tell. So we will be diving in, creating mission statements, revising mission statements, and dissecting mission statements of, of big companies, just so you can see you know what works and what doesn't work. But to touch back on what you just said with Epic, something I see a lot with uh, particularly nonprofits, and I want to get your, your two cents on this because um, you've worked with both sides. Why is it that nonprofits um, and churches too, I think my church, I've mentioned this to you, has a phenomenal core, mission, vision, core values. Like they live it, they breathe it, everybody knows it. Same with nonprofits. I see that over and over and over. And then you go into a small business or even, even Fortune 500 companies and it's like over there, right? Like, why do you think that is? And why is it so crucial for not only nonprofits and churches, but like everybody to focus on these three areas? So it's in the answer is in the word nonprofit. So, which is a misnomer anyway, because they certainly do make profits. What are you talking about? Right. But they're, what they're trying to get at is we're not motivated by that. Yes, there's legal ramifications for the title nonprofit and writing taxes, taxes and all kinds of stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about why people hear nonprofit taking the, the legal ramifications out of it and why they're either inspired to work with a nonprofit or not. Because what they hear is they're really mi mission driven because they're saying profits aren't the and and I've seen plenty of businesses who seem like they have or do have, not even seen have a great purpose, great product, great initial mission, and get into the place where they start chasing profits. And then all of a sudden, because they somehow still think they're serving the same community, you know, hey, everybody, guess what? We're now, we're, we're selling surfboards to cats. Why? Okay. Why? I went to a conference and there's a guy there <laughs> and he's so amazing. And he's got these, he's got this product and it's surfboard for cats. And he's got no place to sell it. So he wants to partner with that. He's got no place to sell it because cats aren't buying surfboards. Okay. There's like, there's like, th there's only ever been three. And I think they're all dead and, but none of them drowned. So the product works from that sense. Nobody wants surfboards for cats, <laughs> surfboards for cats, but you're chasing it. Why? Opportunity. You're chasing a buck. You're chasing the profit. You've violated your mission. And now the people who were going to come to you aren't. Well, but I'm serving these people and those people own cats and cats need surfboards kind of sometimes. And it, but it was such a good thing. No. And this is how you get disjointed visions. This is how people, uh, missions, you get people 
or, or, or product offerings, people chasing opportunities and, and just because of the, it's because of the profit, it, it skews their mind, right? Or they get excited about some other social cause or something. And it's like, okay, but your, your, your mission is this. And I know you're all excited about this other thing, but Budweiser, that's not your mission. Oh, but it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. Come out either on either side of that equation, whether you think it's a right or wrong or just or unjust moral cause is irrelevant. What is relevant is whether or not that is a cause that serves the mission, not the values. Oh, I value freedom of expression. That's great. And so we're going to support this thing that is the ultimate expression. All right. But your, your mission is this and your core values are these things. And it doesn't sound like, and you're not saying I don't believe in free, free expression. <laughs> of course, you're not saying that. But it's not, your core values, are, these are the five things that we have to, to know about you and rely on you for. And you're trying to jam a whole bunch of other values in here because you're either virtue signaling or doing something, chasing profits. I want to make sure other people know I'm a good guy so they spend money with that's not why they're coming here. So I don't know why you're trying to demonstrate that. And so, and you know this, if your mission is one like an AJ or a church or right, or any other nonprofit that's worth anything, they start with the problem. They're trying, they, they know exactly who they are. This is the kind of thing that motivates them. And then they have a constituent, they have an avatar, they have a, somebody they're serving, and then they find this, my mission is to serve them and I can do it in this way. And it'll be this, the, the core value to mission to vision flows so easily for them. Then they mess it up in the other elements, but that they get right. The people who are getting it right over here and it looks great on a wall. They're, what they're getting wrong is they're missing the heart. And, and the purpose in that mission, value will come, profits will come. We, we understand that. We know that has to happen. Otherwise, all the goodwill and good spirit in the world does nothing if you don't have that, that revenue, right, that you can make some kind of impact in the world with. But this is so key to both and to be able to protect it and to be able to leverage it throughout the rest of your visit. Yeah. So, you know, to be fair, I didn't ask about if uh, nonprofits got the rest of it right. We'll, we'll dive into that in later weeks. But yeah, I, I always I'm answering. I'm a terrible mind. witness. I'm answering <laughs> questions right. I wasn't asked. I will. Uh, we will definitely dive into the well, the other nine areas of the harmonious business architecture um, over the next coming weeks. But before we get there, uh, like we've been talking about today is all about mission. We're going to dive in in about 15 minutes now in the inner circle. Um, if you want to jump in with us, it's on the bottom of the screen, whatif.com slash inner circle. If you're watching this, um, you can definitely get in at one of our different levels. But so while we're in there, you know, we're going to be formulating the perfect mission statement. And that's an oxymoron because there isn't a perfect mission statement, but there is for you and for your business. Every single one needs to be unique. You cannot copy another business's mission statement because it's your mission, your company based on your core values and your vision. So I understand, you know, we have a formula to create that, that we will go into in the inner circle. For now, we're going to assume you have a mission statement and you have a functioning mission statement. How often do you as a CEO, COO, or leader of an organization, nonprofit, whatever it is, how often are you driving that into your staff? And when is it at the beginning of meetings? Is it uh, at the, the start of every text or email? You know, how often are you drilling the mission of the company into your your team? Are you asking me? Who I am asking, asking you. There's no one here. Me? It should be. Uh, well, so a uh, best practice is. Well, wow. I know. I mean. Giant the giant monoliths don't talk about it very often. It's on the front of the building and then that's it. Right? Which doesn't then, count in my opinion because not at all. it's there, it gets ignored. Not at all. And and I've seen people start every, 
not every team meeting because that could then because now you're droning on now it becomes if i'm not thinking about it or, or feeling it or hearing what i'm saying it's just a raise your right hand repeat after me we don't want to get there either so i think you use it at times your team needs to be reminded of it there should be some frequency like quarterly when we have a quarterly sit down with everybody and we talk about where we are i mean that's part of this right you have to do some analysis to say we still live by these core values. Core values should be coming up constantly when you see them being demonstrated and when you want to demonstrate and when you want to praise somebody for demonstrating them. The core values should be sprinkled in everywhere, everywhere. The mission needs to be reminded at least quarterly, like in an official setting, say, hey, we're reviewing things, progress against goals, an all hands kind of setting. Let's remind ourselves that this is the mission. It all should, should be coming up anytime you're doing any kind of strategic planning or thinking about the future. Anytime a big event happens in the world, say, uh-oh, we need to pivot. Let's first remember, did this affect our mission or just how we execute on that mission? Right? Because you can fall into that trap as well. Well, this is, right, mixing the how and the what. The mission, the mission still needs to be served. Or does our mission need to change? Core values should never change. If they do, you got them wrong. Something happened in the world. Now I don't. Now I don't believe in helping people. Now I think we should all be in it for ourselves. That's a, that's an interesting company to work for. And I've worked at those. <laughs> it's not on the wall, but that's how it shows up. Uh, core values should stay the same. Mission can change. That's what happened. You don't want to be Smith Corona. If anybody, I know I'm dating myself. Brandon tries to keep me young and relevant, but it's a struggle. I know. Because I every year I just keep getting older. So how? Anyway. Some things are just not fixable. So but here we are. Myth Corona, world's greatest. They want to make the world's greatest typewriter, and then computers come along and they're gone. They no longer exist. And you have Kodak, whose mission was something to the effect of, you know, produce a film. Right? It was about film, and the film was going away. And they quickly pivoted and said, "We're capturing." It. This is at the time. Like helping people capture memories. Oh, great. You guys figured out the fact that you were wrong going on the Smith Corona mission, which is it should have been something to the effect of allowing people to express their ideas with technology that's easy to use or something, right? That's great because now when, when word processors are coming and then computers are coming and then you're still ahead of the game. You didn't tell me how you're going to do it. You didn't lock yourself into that. And so at least Kodak had the good sense to see it coming and averting that disaster. I'm talking about this publicly instead of the stuff I talk about in the room. In the room, we really rip stuff apart and talk about how things are developed, how they're not playing well, how this mission isn't serving the company vis-a-vis -vis their core values and visions, right? But we're not going to do that here because publicly, so we're only going to say positive things or things that are historically true. And so that happened, right? So I don't think Smith's Corona is around anymore to sue anybody. So for despair. Well, I was going to say too, there was, you dropped a gold nugget there that I won't highlight. You can go watch this again um, or join us in the room. We'll, we'll dive deeper, but you, you offered a little bit of a secret, and that was the second time you said it, into how to create a really effective um, and, I'll say, durable mission statement that will hold up over time. But the other thing, you know, the Smith Corona example is really good. I've heard other people use the example of, um, you know, in the early 1900s, the, the mission was not to create a faster horse. If it was, there would be no automobiles. But instead, Henry Ford said, um, you know, he... he he had a totally different mission. He was going to revolutionize transportation as a whole, as an industry. So um, I think it's important to highlight the difference between is your mission statement specific, like you said, or is it all encompassing of, of a true direction? Um, and on those lines, when do you know it's time to change it? Smith Corona example, ho faster horse example. And when do you know you're just chasing an opportunity in reference to your surfing cats? How do you filter between like when someone when someone comes to you and says, I need to change my mission statement, I got to capture the surfing cat market. What's the pause button to say that's that's an opportunity, not a true market shift? 
Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, well, there's a lot to unpack there. We're gonna have to get into this in the room. Um, to We're gonna dive deeper. Eight. We have eight more minutes. But for this, a brief so, answer. so for this, right? How do you know? Well, one is. So if it's going to impact, if you have one delivery system and that delivery system is in jeopardy, you must pivot now and you have to come back and say, are we trying to force a typewriter in a world where typewriters don't exist anymore? And this is, this is the power of the way that we tackle a lot of problems with our model is we use the power of distillation back to the essence of what the thing is. And so that's how you see then, the essence isn't to hawk typewriters. That's not the purpose, right? It's to, it's to better serve the problem, get back to what is the problem that we're trying to solve for and for whom. So has the market disappeared? Oh, we were, we were helping, you know, dodos find new nesting places there are no more dodos <laughs> so so was our mission only for dodos because we don't we absolutely don't care about other birds in fact we kind of think they're filthy and we don't like them i don't know are there dodo snobs there were they're all extinct ha huh. so is it that we're serving birds really and the need is still there just that particular segmentation because the audience might be defining themselves not as that thing anymore. So they still exist. They just are using different terms. So they're, or they're showing up in a different place. Or is it that we locked ourselves into a vehicle that is going away? Because if I only use Facebook to advertise to people, or I'm a marketing guy that just helps people with their Facebook ads and Facebook suddenly no longer exists, or they change something that, and now you're panicking, well, right, because you're focused on the delivery vehicle. It isn't, you're too narrow. I only exist to help people with Facebook. And if Facebook goes away, I have no business. That's not who you are in your essence, right? Um, and then you have to pivot. So is it a have to? No, neither my vehicle of delivery of service nor the marketplace for that service has been destroyed so then this is an opportunity something is shifting there's new ways that i see okay that's different right um ai coming out I, there were a lot of people were saying oh my god this is going to destroy my business no okay so this is the problem a new saw doesn't eliminate the carpenter. Oh, this is making it make it easy. It's democratizing the cutting of wood. I'm no longer, I can't be a, a woodworker anymore because anybody can do it. No, no, no. It's another tool. Carpenters still exist because the need is still there. It's just a different tool. So you're missing the point if you think, well, what I do is I work this saw better than anybody. And now this saw is outdated. There's a better saw. I guess I'm screwed. No, it's another tool. Because you're looking at it from that lens of, are the people I'm serving, do they, do they still identify as that marketplace? That's a messaging thing. Do they still have that need? That's a constituent need thing. But just the delivery tool is shifted. Fine. But if it's a brand new marketplace, then right now you know I don't have to go. It's a way to expand what I'm doing that still serves my mission. Not just... Guess what? People saw this. Cat surfing is taking off. I hear there's a competitive league that's starting out of Portugal. It's great. People are, you know, they're going for it. This is going to be a big opportunity. Okay. But now you're chasing that because it still doesn't serve your mission. I know it's an opportunity. You know the guy. You met the guy who's, who has the league. He gave you one of the surfing kittens. You're going to raise it. You're in. Start a different company. It's not a vertical. It's not a, it's not a horizontal move to expand. It's not either of those things. This is you chasing a buck. Did I fully answer your question? Well, I know we're going to, we're going to, we have an order in which we're going to tackle this in the room, but you did. I, and yeah, we're, we're going to give go. the flavor here. 
we're, we're going to go deeper into it. We have a couple minutes to wrap up. So I want to highlight a few things. And then I just want to, I'm going to bring up the slides again from last week. So you can just highlight uh, where everything ties together and fits in with our architecture before we hop into the room. But real quick. So if you want to join us in the inner circle, um, it's on the bottom of the screen, whatif.com slash inner circle. If you want to get 30 days free of an inner circle membership, just go take our bat assessment. We talked about this last week. We post videos about this all the time. It is the diagnostic tool that will tell you exactly where your business is right now, where you need the biggest improvements, and it'll reveal the hidden problems that you probably don't even know about, or maybe you've said it's sales, but really it's a leadership problem. Go take this assessment. We'll review it with you. You'll jump in the room with us and we'll fix your business in the first four weeks. If not, hey, not, not the room for you, but I guarantee you we will get that done. So uh, last but not least, I want to bring these slides back up on the screen. So these you you went over last week. Um, just go over with us where we're in Navigate again. Where does this all tie together? Just to illustrate the importance of having this core super tight in your business. And then we're going to jump on over to the actual inner circle room. And we're going to talk to everybody in there in depth about creating the perfect mission statement for your business. So when you say where it ties in, are you, are you talking about the links between Correct. navigation that's, that's and the rest right of it? Because that's where the that's where the leverage is. Mm -hmm. So explain this spider web for me. So all businesses, whether they know it or not, need the 10 fundamental disciplines in them and navigation being one of them. But the power, the thing is that if you could take the world's seemingly best business, somebody who's killing it in all 10 of these, they have mastered all 10, but the proper links and leverage points between those 10 disciplines are not there. They're leaving something on the table. It's not a fully harm, completely harmonious business. There are there are there is power being left there. There is leverage that's not being utilized, and the results aren't going to be there. And you're, you're going to have hiccups, bumps, and things holding you back that you can't see. Everything's great. Look, everything's great. Well, yeah, you've got the best system here for this, and you have the best outlook here for that, and you have the best plan here for that. But they're not tied together in the right way, and that's that's what we do. Well, if you want a mission out of that, what we exi what if exists to demonstrate the acceleration, ease, and joy that comes from running a harmonious business. That's our mission. There's a lot in there, trust me. We don't say we teach. We don't say we run courses. We don't say we do events. We do all those things. We demonstrate it. And that word is there for a reason. We'll talk about that when we get into the room because... It's a big reveal, and I think it'll it'll start to shift people on how they write these things in a way that gets the maximum leverage out of it. I like the tease. So if you're ready, if you want to dive into crafting the perfect mission statement for your business that really, really supercharges your, your mission and gets your employees on board, gets your business started on track to the next level, hop on over whatif.com slash inner circle. But first, take the bad. We will see you there free for 30 days. Sean, jump in real quick. What do you got? It's how to, it's it's not only how to do it, how to write it, how to rewrite it. We'll give you the model for writing it and then what to do afterwards to get because it's practical in there. We call it the sandbox. It's the what if inner circle, but we let you party. It's the room, the sandbox. We play in there. But good purpose and it is practical and you will get something out of it. See you there. That is right. We will see you there. What if.com slash inner circle. We're hopping over next week. We're going to talk about vision on this preview call and please join us in the inner circle. Mm -hmm.